Darkness draped the town like a shroud, a stillness that should have been calming but instead felt oppressive. I regretted every shift at that desolate hotel, a grim place that had never truly recovered from the hurricane's grasp. Broken houses dotted the streets, their empty windows staring like accusing eyes. The hotel, a mere 20-minute walk from my own crumbling sanctuary, stood as a final bastion of life in this forsaken place. I worked the night shift, from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. It was a time when shadows danced with sinister intent, and the hotel's emptiness seemed to amplify every creak and whisper. A meager nine rooms were occupied tonight, a far cry from the bustling days after the storm. Most nights, I found solace in the back break room, a dimly lit haven with a flickering coffee machine and a sense of impending dread. It was during one of these lonely nights that the terror began its wretched waltz. A voice, deep and foreboding, pierced the silence from the lobby. Hello, it called, a word that dripped with malice. I hesitated, my heart thudding in my chest like a drum of impending doom. Stepping into the lobby, I saw him, a man, or perhaps something wearing the guise of a man, standing on the other side of the glass. He demanded towels, his voice a jagged edge against the silence. I obliged, sliding them under the partition, only to be met with a gaze that sent shivers down my spine. His eyes were pools of darkness, devoid of humanity. As he walked away, his movements were jerky, unnatural. Returning to the safety of the break room, I watched him on the monitors. He was not right. Rubbing the towels on his face with a frenzied fervor, he seemed to be erasing himself, wiping away some unseen horror that clung to his skin. Minutes passed like hours before the voice returned, a crescendo of madness. My key card is broken, he declared, each word laced with venom. But his room number was a fabrication, a twisted lie meant to lure me into his web. When I confronted him, his reaction was beyond comprehension. The towels hit the floor with a soft thud, his smile widening into a grotesque parody of joy. I'm going to kill you, he whispered, the words a promise of death. With each repetition, his voice grew louder, a cacophony of madness that filled the air. I reached for the phone, my fingers trembling as I dialed 911. But his laughter, a sickening sound that echoed through the empty halls, mocked my futile attempts at salvation. As he sauntered towards the door, his gaze never leaving mine, I knew true fear. The hours that followed were a blur of terror and paranoia. Every shadow seemed to conceal his twisted form, every creak of the floorboards his stealthy advance. When my relief finally arrived, I fled into the night, the chill air a welcome respite from the suffocating grip of the hotel. But the darkness outside offered no sanctuary. A voice, his voice, drifted from the shadows of the parking lot, a whispered threat that chilled me to the bone. I quickened my pace, the rhythmic thud of my footsteps echoing in the empty streets. And then, he was behind me. The sound of his footsteps, muffled and menacing, filled the silence. I dared not look back, for I knew what I would see. The embodiment of terror, his eyes gleaming with madness. I ran, each step a desperate plea for salvation. The world around me was a blur of fear and confusion, my mind consumed by the knowledge that death was at my heels. As I reached a residential street, I saw a glimmer of hope, a house with a light burning bright in the upstairs window. With the last of my strength, I raced towards the house, the sound of his laughter ringing in my ears. I pounded on the door, my voice a hoarse cry for help, and then, salvation. The door swung open, revealing a stranger bathed in warm light. Without hesitation, he pulled me inside, his eyes filled with concern. As he called the police, I collapsed against the wall, my body trembling with exhaustion and fear. The police arrived swiftly, their presence a beacon of hope in the darkness. They listened as I recounted the night's horrors, their expressions grim with understanding. CCTV footage was collected, a haunting record of the man's madness. Days passed, each one tinged with dread as I awaited news of his capture. And then, the lineup. Five faces, each one a twisted reflection of the man who haunted my nightmares. I stared, my heart racing as I searched for his familiar gaze. But when asked to identify him, 
I faltered. None of them were him, or perhaps all of them were. In that moment of uncertainty, I realized the true horror of that night. He could be anyone, anywhere, waiting in the shadows to strike again. As I left the police station, a chill wind whispered through the empty streets, a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of sight. And though I prayed for peace, a single thought echoed in my mind like a curse. I wandered the streets with a newfound paranoia, every shadow morphing into a potential threat. Sleep became a distant memory, replaced by restless nights haunted by his laughter, his threats, his eyes filled with madness. Days blurred into weeks, and still, there was no sign of him. The town carried on with its muted existence, oblivious to the terror that lurked in its midst. I returned to work, each shift a test of nerves, each moment a battle against the memories that threatened to consume me. And then, one fateful night, he returned. It began with a simple phone call, the shrill ring cutting through the silence of the empty lobby. I hesitated, the memories of that night flooding back with a vengeance. But duty called, and I answered. Hello? I said, my voice barely a whisper. Silence greeted me, a heavy weight that settled in the air like a suffocating fog. And then, his voice, a twisted echo from the past. I'm coming for you, he whispered, the words dripping with malice. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest like a wild beast desperate for escape. The phone slipped from my trembling fingers, clattering to the floor with a deafening crash. I backed away, my eyes locked on the lobby entrance as if expecting him to materialize from the shadows. But there was nothing, just the empty expanse of the deserted hotel. I fled, my footsteps echoing in the silent halls like a drumbeat of impending doom. The back door beckoned, a promise of escape from this nightmare. I reached it, my hands shaking as I fumbled with the lock. And then, freedom. The night air was cold against my skin, a sharp contrast to the suffocating terror that had gripped me moments before. I ran, each step a desperate plea for safety. But he was there, always there, his laughter a haunting melody that followed me through the empty streets. I darted down alleys, turned corners with reckless abandon, but he was always one step behind. His voice, a whisper on the wind, grew louder with each passing moment. Die, he hissed, the word a promise of death. I stumbled, my legs giving out beneath me as exhaustion and fear consumed me. He was there, his form looming like a specter of death. I could feel his cold breath on my neck, his fingers like icy tendrils around my throat. And then, a blinding light. Sirens wailed in the distance, a cacophony of salvation. The police had come, their presence a beacon of hope in the darkness. They found me, a broken shell of a person, trembling on the cold pavement. They searched the streets, combed every corner and alley, but he was gone, vanished into the night like a ghost, leaving behind only the echo of his madness. I left that town, fleeing from the shadows that had consumed me. But even now, in the safety of a new life, his voice lingers in the recesses of my mind, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurks just beyond the edge of sight. And so, I live in fear, forever haunted by the knowledge that he could be out there, waiting in the shadows, watching, waiting. Let's not meet again. The pro department of our home improvement company was usually quiet during the closing shift, a time when the store dimmed into a shadowy haven of hardware and lumber. I worked alongside Nicole, a cashier with a gentle demeanor that belied her inner strength. She was my closest companion at work, a friend I trusted more than anyone else. Nicole was a target for unwanted attention, her beauty drawing the gaze of contractors and customers alike. Despite her polite rejections, some persisted, their advances bordering on harassment. I often joked that she should just tell them she was gay, but she was adamant that her personal life was none of their business. One evening, after returning from her break, Nicole's expression was troubled. She recounted an encounter with a particularly persistent customer who had made her uncomfortable with his advances. I brushed it off, assuming it was just another unwanted admirer, but a sense of unease lingered. Later that day, the man returned, 
Nicole was busy with a customer, leaving me alone to face him. He seemed normal enough, but there was a darkness in his eyes that made my skin crawl. I'm here to see Nicole, he declared, his voice smooth but tinged with something sinister. I asked how he knew her, trying to gauge his intentions. His story was a tangle of half-truths and lies, claiming they had a date planned. But when pressed, he stumbled over his words, revealing his true intentions. I want to ask her out again, he said, his tone turning demanding. I knew I had to protect Nicole, but I couldn't reveal her personal life without her consent. In a split-second decision, I blurted out that she was my fiancé. The man's expression shifted from confusion to anger. You? With her? He sneered, his voice dripping with disdain. I stood my ground, insisting that we were getting married soon and he needed to leave. His anger simmered beneath the surface, but he eventually stormed out, leaving behind a cloud of menace. Weeks passed, the encounter fading into the background of our daily lives. Until one night, when darkness fell and the store emptied of customers, leaving only the two of us to close up. As we gathered the trash near the entrance, a loud bang echoed through the store, causing us both to jump. The man was back, his face pressed against the glass doors, eyes burning with obsession. We're closed. I shouted, but he ignored me, his gaze fixed on me with a chilling intensity. I'm here for you, he declared, his voice a twisted mix of desire and menace. If I can't have her, I'll have you. Fear clenched my heart, a cold dread settling in the pit of my stomach. I could feel Nicole's hand trembling in mine as we backed away, our escape blocked by the relentless pounding of the man against the glass. Nicole's voice cut through the chaos, her tone firm and commanding. Get away from us. We're calling the police. But the man's obsession had turned into madness. He laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the empty store. If I can't have you, no one will, he growled, his words a promise of violence. In that moment, fear gave way to determination. I grabbed a nearby 2 by 4 my hands shaking but my resolve firm. Nicole's eyes met mine, a silent understanding passing between us. As the man continued to pound on the glass, the doors rattling in their frames, we knew we had to act. With a shared nod, we lunged forward, swinging the makeshift weapon with all our strength. The wood connected with a satisfying thud, the man stumbling back with a cry of pain. We didn't hesitate, our adrenaline-fueled instincts taking over as we continued to strike, each blow a desperate bid for survival. Finally, he fell to the ground, bloodied and defeated. The police arrived soon after, taking him into custody as we stood, panting and trembling, in the aftermath of our ordeal. In the days that followed, we found strength in each other. Our bond forged through the crucible of fear. The man was charged with stalking and assault, his obsession with Nicole leading to his downfall. But the shadows of that night lingered, a reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the surface. We no longer felt safe at the store, our sanctuary tainted by the memory of his obsession. As we moved forward, finding new jobs and rebuilding our lives, we knew one thing for certain. We would always have each other's backs, and in that shared strength, we found a sense of peace amidst the shadows of our past. Days turned into weeks, and the man's face became a haunting memory in the recesses of our minds. We found solace in our newfound sense of solidarity, no longer co-workers but comrades bound by a shared trauma. The home improvement store became a place of dread, its aisles and corners holding echoes of that fateful night. Nicole and I decided it was time to move on to leave behind the shadows of our past and forge a new path. We found jobs at separate places, far from the store that had once been our sanctuary and our prison. Life moved on, but the memory of the man's obsession remained like a lingering specter. We attended college together, our friendship growing stronger with each passing day. In the safety of the campus grounds, we found a semblance of peace, a refuge from the darkness that had once threatened to consume us. But just when we thought we had left it all behind, the past came knocking. It was a rainy night, the kind that seemed to seep into your bones and chill you to the core. Nicole and I were studying in our dorm room when the phone rang, shattering the quiet of the evening. I picked it up, 
my heart skipping a beat as a familiar voice filled the air. Hello, my darlings, he purred, his voice dripping with malice. Did you miss me? Nicole's eyes widened in terror as she recognized the voice, her hand trembling as she reached for her phone to call the police. But before she could dial, the line went dead, leaving only the staticky echo of his laughter hanging in the air. Fear gripped us both, its icy tendrils wrapping around our hearts. We knew he had found us, his obsession unyielding even in the face of our escape. The sound of footsteps outside our door sent us into a panic, our minds racing with fear and uncertainty. We huddled together, our breaths coming in ragged gasps as the shadows of the past closed in around us. And then, a knock. Three sharp raps against the door, each one a harbinger of terror. We remained frozen, the world outside our door a dark and unknown abyss. Open up, my darlings, his voice whispered through the crack under the door, sending shivers down our spines. Nicole's eyes met mine, a silent understanding passing between us. With trembling hands, we pushed a heavy dresser in front of the door, our makeshift barricade a feeble attempt at protection. But he was relentless, his pounding against the door growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. Let me in, my loves, he crooned, his voice a twisted mix of desire and madness. We clung to each other, our hearts pounding in unison as we braced for the inevitable. The door creaked under the force of his blows, the wood splintering and cracking with each impact. And then, silence. We held our breath, waiting for the next assault, but it never came. Instead, we heard the distant wail of sirens, the sound growing louder and louder until it filled the room. The police had arrived, their presence a beacon of hope in the darkness. They stormed into the room, their guns drawn as they apprehended the man who had haunted our nightmares. As they led him away in handcuffs, his eyes locked with mine for a brief moment, a twisted smile playing on his lips. But it was a smile devoid of triumph, a hollow victory in the face of his defeat. The nightmare was over, but the scars remained. Nicole and I clung to each other, our bodies shaking with relief and exhaustion. In that moment, we knew we had survived the darkness, emerging stronger and more resilient than before. Life moved on, but the memory of that night lingered like a shadow in the corners of our minds. We graduated college, each of us forging our own paths but forever bound by the shared experience of survival. And though we had faced the darkest depths of human obsession, we emerged from the shadows stronger, braver, and more determined than ever. Let's not meet again. It was a chilly night in 2016, the kind that seemed to wrap the world in a blanket of darkness. I had just started a new job at a motel, a humble position that came with its own set of challenges. My friend Michael had gotten me the job, and for a few days, he had trained me alongside the owner. But it was on the night shift, from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., that the true test of my mettle would come. The motel was a quiet place the only noise coming from the occasional car passing by on the nearby highway. The office, where I spent most of my time, was surrounded by large glass windows that offered a view of the empty parking lot. There was a monitor with security cameras, a meager attempt at ensuring safety in the dead of night. My boss, the owner, had left for a week-long vacation with his wife, leaving me to man the night shift alone. It was my first night alone, and I felt a mix of nervousness and excitement at the prospect of being in charge. Around 1 a.m., a man walked in, his demeanor seemingly normal at first glance. He inquired about room availability, and without hesitation, I confirmed we had one room left. As I began the process of creating his reservation, I noticed something peculiar. The man started swatting at the air, making spitting noises as if he was surrounded by invisible flies. I tried to ignore it, focusing on my task at hand, but a sense of unease settled over me like a dark cloud. After handing him his key, the man returned from his room surprisingly quickly. He slammed his hand against the glass door, causing me to jump in fright. His eyes bore into mine, a look of intensity that sent shivers down my spine. I can't get into my room, 
he growled, his voice a low rumble of anger. Panic seized me, my mind racing for a solution. I suggested that perhaps there was an issue with his key and quickly made him a new one, but his eyes, filled with an unexplainable darkness, never left mine. As he returned to his room, I tried to text Michael for guidance, but there was no reply. Alone and frightened, I heard the man trudging down the stairs, his footsteps echoing in the quiet night. In a moment of sheer panic, I ran to the back office and locked the door, my heart pounding in my chest. I pulled out my pocket knife, a small comfort in the face of looming danger. From behind the safety of the locked door, I heard him yelling, demanding to be led into his room. Fear clenched at my heart as I listened to him muttering to himself, the words, kill her, sending a chill down my spine. Desperate for help, I called out that I was on the phone and would be out shortly. But in reality, I was frantically calling Michael, praying for some guidance. With trembling hands, I finally stepped out of the office, the man now standing outside the door. His eyes bore into mine with an intensity that made my blood run cold. I'm just on the phone, I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. Let me escort you to your room. He seemed to agree, and we began to walk outside towards the staircase. I held my knife tightly hidden in my hand, my heart pounding with each step. He walked behind me, his presence like a looming shadow. As we reached his room, I smiled and pointed to the door, reassuring him that this was indeed his room. But a sinking feeling settled in my stomach when I noticed he was heading towards a different room, one that belonged to another guest. In a split-second decision, I told him, Oh, that's the wrong room. This is your room, pointing to the correct door. Thankfully, he entered without further incident, and I quickly retreated back to the safety of the office, locking the door behind me. It was then that I realized the room he had been trying to enter belonged to a lone woman, a chilling realization of what could have been. The next guest to check in was a police officer from a neighboring town, and I confided in him about the harrowing encounter. He promised to keep an eye out, but the sense of unease lingered. The man returned the next night, but this time I had the doors locked and claimed we were fully booked. When my boss returned from vacation, I explained the terrifying ordeal to him. However, he didn't seem to take it seriously, dismissing it as a one-time incident. I continued to work at the motel for the next year, encountering many strange and unsettling situations, but none quite matched the fear and panic of that night. A night when the shadows seemed to whisper of danger lurking just beyond the glass. It was a lesson learned in the harsh reality of the night. A reminder that even in the quietest of places, darkness can still find its way in. And as I look back on that night now, more than two years later, I am grateful for the lessons it taught me. I am stronger, wiser, and more cautious than ever before. But the memory of that man's eyes, filled with madness and obsession, will forever haunt me. The year that followed that harrowing night at the motel was filled with a strange mix of dread and determination. I continued to work the night shift, each evening plagued by the fear that the man would return. Despite my boss's dismissal of the incident, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. Months passed, and the memory of that night faded into the background of my daily life. But just when I thought I had put it all behind me, the past came rushing back in a wave of terror. It was a quiet night, much like the one where it all began. The motel was shrouded in darkness, the only sound the faint hum of the security cameras. I was in the office, going through the nightly routine of paperwork, when I heard a familiar sound. A knock at the glass door. My heart skipped a beat, dread pooling in the pit of my stomach. I hesitated, my hand hovering over the phone, before mustering the courage to approach the door. Through the glass, I could see a figure standing outside, obscured by the darkness of the night. My mind raced with fear and uncertainty. Could it be him? The man who had haunted my nightmares for so long? With trembling hands, I unlocked the door and opened it just a crack, peering out into the night. Standing before me was a man, his features hidden in the shadows. I need a room, he said, his voice sending chills down my spine. I wanted to slam the door shut and lock it tight, but something held me back. Was it curiosity? Or was it the fear that if I turned him away, he would return with vengeance? Without a word, I stepped aside and gestured for him to come in. 
As he entered the office, a wave of unease washed over me. His presence seemed to fill the room, suffocating me with its intensity. I quickly went through the motions of checking him in, my hands shaking as I handed him the key. He took it with a smirk, his eyes glinting with something dark and unsettling. Thank you, he said, his voice dripping with malice. I watched him as he walked towards the door, each step echoing in the silence of the night. Just as he reached the threshold, he turned to me, his eyes locking onto mine. You know, he said, his voice low and menacing, I never forgot about you. Fear clenched at my heart, a cold dread settling over me like a heavy blanket. I wanted to scream, to run, but I was frozen in place as he stepped out into the night. For what felt like an eternity, I stood there, my mind reeling with fear and uncertainty. Was he coming back? Was I in danger once again? But then, the sound of his footsteps faded into the distance, swallowed by the night. I let out a shaky breath, the tension in my body slowly releasing. It was only then that I realized I had been holding my breath the entire time. I sank into the nearest chair, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to make sense of what had just happened. The rest of the night passed in a blur of fear and paranoia. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, sent me into a panic. I was convinced he would return, that he was lurking in the shadows just beyond my sight. But morning eventually came, the light of dawn chasing away the darkness of the night. I stumbled out of the office, my body weary from the sleepless night. As I locked up the motel, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that clung to me like a shadow. The man's words echoed in my mind, a chilling reminder of the danger that still lurked out there. I never saw him again after that night, but his presence continued to haunt me in the quiet moments of the day. I left that job soon after, unable to shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me like a shroud. Years have passed since that fateful night, but the memory of the man with the dark eyes still lingers. It serves as a reminder of the darkness that exists in the world, the dangers that lurk just beyond our sight. But despite the fear and the uncertainty, I have emerged stronger than before. That night taught me a valuable lesson about the importance of trust, of listening to my instincts, and of the dangers that can arise in the dead of night. And as I look back on that night now, I am grateful for the lessons it taught me. I may never forget the fear that gripped me that night, but I have emerged stronger and more resilient because of it. Let's not meet again.